Benjamin Teitelbaum. He is the author of War for Eternity. He is also associate professor at the University of Colorado Boulder. Normally, I would say, warning, uh, just from <laughs> just from the book and that he's a professor at the University of Colorado Boulder. However, I've talked to Benjamin uh, several times over the last, I think it's the last year, maybe it's been longer than that. Um, he is watching something and very concerned about something that I am concerned about. And that is the influence of traditionalism as really defined by Alexander Dugan, a very, very dangerous guy who is actually calling for Armageddon. He is actually believes that that's the thing that's going to solve all of our problems. And I guess in a way he's right, but uh, I don't think the way he's trying to pull it together. Uh, Benjamin, can I call you Ben or Benjamin? Ben, please. Glenn. Okay. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank you very much. I know we've talked about doing this show for a long time, uh, and we may have to cut this into two shows and then maybe even a podcast as well. Um, but I, I want you to let's start with Putin's speech and what he said uh, that I think only a few people really can pick up on that know what Ale- who Alexander Dugan is and what his plan is. So tell me what we learned from Putin's speech. If you listen, and, and good morning again, Glenn, it's a pleasure to be with you. If you Thank listen you. to that whole speech, you could come away from it thinking that this is all about kind of dry policy decision making on his part. He spends a lot of time talking about the economy of Ukraine, spends a lot of time talking about the, the history of the Soviet Union, the Communist Party, some of the policy decisions that he thinks that they made wrong and need to be corrected. But at the very beginning of that speech, he said something almost in passing, that yes, would, I think, uh, go by unnoticed for, for a lot of listeners. And that he's, he said that Ukrainians and Russians have a spiritual bond mm-hmm. between the two of them. And, and that, that tells me, and it should tell a lot of observers, that Putin is thinking in two ways, and he's motivating himself in two ways. There is this, again, this dry, almost um, technical policy-based discussion and motivation he's trying to to push to the Russian people to say, well, we have to do this because NATO is going to come to our borders. Ukraine perhaps has nuclear ambitions. We have to deal with that. The other, the other piece, though, is that Russia has a sort of spiritual mandate to collect its lost children and to unite itself with the populations around the world that are its natural kin. Um, that, that is what, what stands out to me as I hear this. And that is what also makes this particular situation that we're dealing with today actually about something far much bigger and much more intractable, I would say as well. Okay. So let's talk about Dugan and just define traditionalism. This is something that if you, if you read the, uh, uh, fourth political theory, um, it, there are times that you will read it and go, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um, because I think this is what Brexit about is about. I think this is what uh, some Canadians feel. I think this is what some Americans all over the world, people are feeling like, hey, you know, I'm French. And, I, you know, I think France is pretty great. And I'd like to be French. And I'm not embarrassed about France. Same thing with Brexit. They want to be British. It's this feeling that we are being told that our traditions and our uh, country is not good, not uh, doesn't have anything special about it. And people are pushing back on that. All of our traditions are, are being threatened. That part of his definition of traditionalism is, is I think, something that connects uh, with people all around the world. But that's not what it means, correct? That, that's just a small piece of it. And, and sometimes, you know, when we're exploring ideas, it details matter. Yeah. You, you can have you can have a, a sort of, of doctrine that, that is appealing in a lot of senses, but a small detail can turn into something sinister. So when when Putin is referring to the spiritual uh mandates of, of Russia, that connects him with a prominent Russian philosopher, kind of of a mysterious mandate and a political operative named Alexander Dugan. He is associated himself with a philosophy called traditionalism or the traditional school. 
it asserts that time does not move in linear fashion. That is to say, we're not necessarily progressing forward in a, in a clear direction, but instead it moves in cycles. And most of the time, uh, society is degrading, save for one moment when there's a, an apocalyptic explosion and destruction of the social world and we are reborn into a golden age. It's that last piece, Glenn, that is that is so so key here, because when you look at, at history in the way that that these traditionalists do, there can be justification for Armageddon, as you put it, for destruction, mass destruction. Chaos, just total and, and complete it. chaos. Yes, as as a, 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 a sort of prelude to a golden age, a utopia that we're going to be reborn into. That's that's one of the distinguishing features. That is what is paired with this. I'd say it's small T traditionalism that you were you were referring to earlier. People wanting to 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 preserve and, and conserve uh, values and identities that matter to them. This this apocalyptic aspect of of the ideology is what is distinguishing this this way of thinking. I, I will tell you that um, uh, Ben and I have talked off the air, and I've wanted to do this show for a while, but I have waited until I think people are in the right. Uh, frame of mind to understand it. I think this is one of the most critical things that we can learn about, especially those of us on the right, because this is how you will know if there is a troublemaker in your midst. Um, because a lot of people will hear some of this stuff and go, yeah, that's me too. Uh, but that's not what they mean, and they have a different vision of the future. So it's you, it, please listen to what we're talking about here. Um, it goes way beyond uh, Russia. But let me stay in Russia for just a just a couple of more minutes. Um, it, what is Novo Russia? No, Novo Russia. This would be the. This was. This is Dugan's. Uh, way of describing these eastern territories in Ukraine um, that are breaking off apparently and have been recognized as independent states, people's republics by Putin. Um, Dugan has been referring to them as new Russia, uh, as a new expansion. And and Putin in the past has borrowed that language from this, this renegade philosopher that he, I've been speaking to you about. He used uh, that. At, I mean, Crimea was really a Dugan plan, wasn't it? It was. Absolutely. I mean, it was it was one small piece of a Dugan plan. Right. Um, I, I can to catch your listeners up. Dugan, after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, this this philosopher, after the Soviet Union fell apart, he wanted to see not the revival of communism and the communist state, but a Russian nationalism that would expand almost to the to the exact boundaries of the former Soviet Union, but not their ideology, but instead uh, a, a, a really fanatical Russian nationalism and federalism. And all of those states that started to move out of the Russian Georgia, Baltics, uh, Ukraine, all of those in his mind were targets to be brought back in. And it was imperative that Russia do it forcefully, decisively, to establish a boundary for American and liberal democratic uh, ideology in the world. Um, it was important for him to set a boundary there to show that liberalism, that uh, democracy, lowercase l liberalism, uh, was not the fate of the whole world. But in fact, those those territories needed to imagine a different future for themselves, a future that returned in his mind to their roots rather than looked forward to a, a different future. And it is the same kind of thing in a way that 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 Hitler used faith of people he used all different faiths. It wasn't just Christianity. He destroyed those faiths as he went in. But Dugan is using faith, and that's why that spiritual element, because the Ukraine plays a very important part for Eastern Orthodox uh, Christianity, right? It is the spiritual, uh, I don't know, uh, center for that, isn't it? It's, it's it's one of them for sure. It, it's it's also a sort of mythological center for the the origins of the Russian ethnicity and state as well. Which Kiev, is even worse because that that's exactly what Hitler was doing with all of the other <laughs> religions. He was tying, he was just tying all these myths together. 
Yes, Chris, Chris, you know, you look at the union of religion and nationalism, and, and then you start to find yourself in a place where your state acts as though it has a divine mandate, and that is a dangerous place to be. It's, it's, it's not surprising, and won't perhaps surprise your listeners, given what we're saying here, that one of Dugan's ideal states in the world today is Iran, because there you have a union of state power with religious authority, and the ability, uh, really the justification for anyone in that state to question the actions of the government is, is shackled because uh, if you do that, you are questioning a religious authority that's not allowed to be questioned. So this is all, uh, all this goes to, to a, a celebration of authoritarianism and, and, and a way to equip uh, the power of the state or, or a demagogue uh, with greater cultural in addition to to military and economic and political power all right i want to talk about the uh fourth political theory if you can define what it is i also want to do one more thing a stop on on uh putin does he is he the lunar putin or the solar putin which we'll understand what is his real game here uh and then i want to bring it home to america which is extraordinarily important uh, for all Americans, but especially those on the right. And we'll give you that information here in just a second. We are uh, with Benjamin Teitelbaum, the author of War for Eternity. Um, he is a guy who I have talked to several times. There, there really, I think there's about three of us, Ben, that are, <laughs> that are watching and understand what the importance of Alexander Dugan um, and, uh, it's, it's a little frightening. Everybody I talk to, I think there's one other guy that I know that, uh, we all look at each other and goes, why, why aren't people paying attention to this? It's so important. Right. Um, right. what is, what is the fourth political theory? So yeah, this, this is a challenge, Glenn, to explain know, it for a period of time, but if, if, uh, the, the, when Alexander Dugan speaks about a fourth political theory, he's speaking about an alternative to the other three main Western ideologies that that fought throughout the last century. Uh, that is to say, liberalism being one, lowercase l. It's it's you know when Americans hear liberalism, we think Democratic Party, but no. we're really just talking about free market, um, democracy, rights of individual, rule right. of law, um, and. Communism being a second one and fascism being a third. Dugan's belief was, was that communism and liberalism in World War II combined forces to kill the third political theory, fascism, and then uh, uh, liberalism, the first political theory, allowed communism to die of old age, essentially, with the, with the Soviet Union. But Dugan wants to see an alternative to all, all of these, uh, one that you might say, fuses elements of the second and the third of communism and fascism. Um, in his mind, uh, the danger of liberalism and the lower, lowercase del liberal democratic world is, is its rampant individualism um, and its contempt for history, its, its devotion to pro progress and the belief that really our roots are something to be overcome and escaped. And also its will toward, toward globalization and, and building larger, larger and larger communities. What he wants to see is a world that is shrunken, basically, in its scope um, and where the identity of your group or your tribe becomes the primary object of political activism. That is to say, not the individual, as in liberalism, not the class, as in communism, and not the race, per se, as in fascism, but a slightly, let's say, related concept which is the, the ethnos or the, or a small community or the tribe to see a society that works on preserving those differences. That's, that's what a, a fourth political theory should be doing. And it should be in his mind opposed to progress, opposed to development and, and certainly opposed to any, any larger state like the United States uh, operating on the global sphere. So you can hear that and say, wow, I see pieces of that from both the right and the left. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I see a new world order being shaped like that, except he wants to destroy anything global. Um, he also wants to destroy the United States and 
I think there are some others that would like to do that, and they are using some of those tactics. So, mm-hmm. um, sees the United States, any pathway toward toward realizing this goal has to, in his mind, go through the destruction of the United States. Um, at least, at least, if U.S. global hegemonic power, occasionally he'll say that if the United States were 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 firmly contained within. Uh, within its own borders and its ideals never, never spread anyplace else throughout the world, then perhaps we could coexist. But it's about, it's about containing U.S. power. Okay, 45 seconds before the break. Tell me, is, he, is Putin operating, do you think, in, in um, Ukraine more under that or on just a you know, quick business, capitalist, I just want money and I'm going to get those ports? I tell you, I think the way that he has been speaking recently makes it seem like the business-like estimation of of Ukraine is is more of a facade and excuse to do what he wants to do, which is expand this Russian state. Okay, good. That's good news. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here. And let's go, Brandon.